Well, good morning, everyone. Here we are. It's our last day this week for Circle Time, and we are going to be continuing on talking about Hanukkah and reading another book about Hanukkah as well. Um, and I also have our menorah out here. We're going to light it along with the book. It'll be kind of fun. So let's figure out what day it is today. So the last day of school we had was, what was it called? Tuesday. Then Wednesday. So today is Thursday. So I'm going to move the frog down to Thursday. And then who remembers the name of our new month? Remember, it's not November anymore. It's our new month. Yep, it's December, and December is a month that has lots of holidays, and Hanukkah is the first one we're talking about. So the first number we have is number one, and that was Tuesday, right? So then, what comes after one? Two, and we have a white colored stocking with a number two on it. So that was yesterday, Wednesday, fours day. One, two, what comes next? Three, and let's find out. We have a third color stocking here. We have a green stocking with a three on it. So we'll put that up there. That's today. So today is Thursday, December 3rd. All right, let's figure out what we have for weather today. So you're going to look out your window at your house and see what the weather is like. So you're going to figure out if it is foggy or stormy or sunny or windy or snowy or partly cloudy or rainy or cloudy. All right, so look out the window, see what the weather is like at your house. And we also need to figure out what it feels like outside, what the temperature is. So does it feel cool? Does it feel warm? Does it feel cold? Or does it feel so you'll have to step out your door at your house to figure out what it feels like today. All right, so we have been talking about the holiday of Hanukkah, which is a, Han a holiday that comes in or around the month of December. And we talked last time about that this is called a menorah and that there are eight nights of Hanukkah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's why there are these eight candles. The middle one is called the shamash. It's the helper candle. It lights all the other ones. Usually menorahs have actual real candles and you light them with a flame, right? But mine's an electric one since I'm at school. I don't wanna cause any fires here or anything like that. So we have an electric one here. So let's find out what our book is. Now our book is kind of a long one today, but it's a really good story. I really like it. And it actually doesn't fit in our mystery envelope. It's just barely too big. So I had to kind of hide it behind. So let's slide it up and see what book we have today. Ah, let's see on the front, you can see in the window, there is a menorah, right? Just like our menorah here. And it is called Our Eight Nights of Hanukkah. All right, so here we go. And each night I will light a new candle on the menorah that we have here in the classroom. So our eight nights of Hanukkah. The very first night of Hanukkah, we polished the silver menorah, ours is silver too, that was my great grandma's. She brought it from Russia maybe a hundred years ago. It's the oldest thing in the house, I think. We all say the prayers and together as we light the shamash, that's the tallest candle and touch it to the first night's candle so i am going to push my little button on the side it's going to light the shamash and the first candle for the first night of hanukkah dang it i know it's a little oh, there we go that one didn't want to come on for a second there all right i know it's a little hard to see on the screen but it is on so there they are lighting their first candle too baby audrey just burbles but that kind of sounds like Hebrew. 
Then we sing Hanukkah songs and take turns reading a story that's even older than Great Grandma's menorah. It's the 2,000 year old true story about this small group of Jews led by Judah Maccabee who didn't want to worship statues of cows and give up being Jewish. So they fought against this huge powerful Syrian army. But by a real miracle, the Maccabees won. Nobody in that story gave Hanukkah presents, especially ones with superheroes or batteries. They were just glad to be free to be Jews. And remember, if you want to learn some more about Hanukkah, in the email I sent your mom and dad, there is a link to a Sesame Street video on YouTube that talks all about it. All right, it'll give you some more information. On the second night at Grandma and Grandpa's, we light two candles with the shamash. Then we take turns grating potatoes so Grandma can fry us all potato pancakes. Those are yummy. We always eat too many latkes and lots of homemade applesauce too. So latkes are the official name for potato pancakes and they're really good. And if you dip them in applesauce, it's even better. The latkes are really crispy kind of like french fry pancakes, because grandma fries them in oil. So now we need to light the second night. See, one, two for the second night of Hanukkah. The oil is supposed to remind us of the lamp that the Maccabees found in the wrecked temple. It only had about one day's worth of oil in it, but it burned for eight days. This was a sign that God was on their side, and it was why Hanukkah lasts for eight days. Remember how Hanukkah lasts for eight days? That's why. Mom says Grandma's latkes last eight days in her stomach, too. You know what's funny? Our dog comes with us to Grandma's, too, and we don't give him latkes, but the next day you can smell the latkes in his fur. That's because the smell of the cooking stuck to his fur, right? On the third night, the shamash lights three candles and we search the house for things we want to give away as presents. See, our family has this tradition. Before we get any gifts, we gather all the toys and clothes we don't think we'll use next year. We're not rich, but our clothes have, or excuse me, our closets have plenty of clothes and toys. Some toys we didn't even have time to play with. So we give these as gifts to people who aren't as lucky as we are, because mom likes to remind us that Jews believe, and I'm gonna make sure I say this right, because I wasn't sure last time, Sadaka, all right, I've got it, Sadaka, which means that even little kids have something extra they can share. All right, so let's light the third candle for the third night of Hanukkah. One, two, three. After that, we paint cards and wrapping paper. We decorate them with glitter and snowflakes, but nothing really Jewish or Christian. Who knows what holiday the kids who receive our gifts are going to celebrate. We just write happiness and peace, since that's really all we wish. On the fourth night, with five candles glowing in the window, we wrap our gifts. After we make sure there aren't any loose parts or missing cards or, or lost men. We erase our smudgy fingerprints and stray crayon marks so everything looks new. Then each gift is wrapped with our homemade paper. Yeah, that's right, I forgot to mention that. Remember they were making their own wrapping paper back here? I thought that was a really good idea. This is also the night our temple has its big Hanukkah party. We bundle up and walk there. The best part is seeing all the lights. Menorahs burning in some windows and trees twinkling in others. The lights tell you who's Jewish and who's not, which you don't really know the rest of the year. When I said that to my dad, he said, well, Hanukkah's a chance to be proud of your religion. All right, so let's light the fourth candle. So one, two, three, four for the fourth night of Hanukkah. All the kids from religious school come with their families. We have cookies shaped in the Star of David and their cider and coffee, Israeli dancing and a play about the Maccabees with aluminum foil swords. 
The preschoolers always dress up as singing, dr er, singing dreidels and spin around. I did when I was little and it made me dizzy. So a dreidel is a top, a spinning top, and you play a game with it. And I, we were, we were going to be learning about that game um, today. Hmm. You know what? I think I might have not put the dreidel game over here. I'm going to have to go get that after I finish reading. <laughs> On the fifth night, we have our big family dinner with Grandma and Grandpa, and maybe some other relatives. I think all the Jewish holidays are about getting together with your family. Friends from my regular school who don't really know about Hanukkah come too. On that night, we say the candle lighting prayers in Hebrew and English. All right, so let's light the fifth night for the, f for the fifth candle. For the fifth night of Hanukkah. One, two, three, four, five. For dessert, Dad gives everyone a net bag with chocolate coins wrapped in gold foil, and then Grandpa says he can beat anyone at a game of dreidel. It's not a very hard game, it's just a spinning top with four Hebrew letters Nun, Gimel, Hay, and Shin, one on each side. The Hebrew letters stand for Nes Gedol Hayasham. Grandpa translates it for anyone who can't speak Hebrew, and mine isn't so good. It means a great miracle happened there. You know, 2,000 years ago. Everybody spoke, everybody probably spoke Hebrew really well back then. At the end of the game, which is mostly laughing because we keep eating our winnings, remember, because they're co coins, they're chocolate coins wrapped in foil. Grandpa gives all us kids Hanukkah gelt real silver dollars to save for college. The sixth night, after we light the menorah, we drive our gifts to a shelter. The people there know kids who don't even have houses. Last year, we sent our presents to our neighbor's cousins. They'd lost almost everything in a gigantic flood, even their dog, although they found him one month later. All right, let me light the sixth candle. One, two, three, four, five, six for the sixth night of Hanukkah. Remember, this is the shamash, the helper candle. Later, we shop for family presents. Mom and Dad take baby Audrey, but we older kids go with Grandma and Grandpa. They make weird suggestions about what to get our parents, like kitchen towels or trivets. We've already hinted a lot about what we'd like, but our parents always surprise us. Grandma and Grandpa never try to buy us clothes. We go to giant toy stores to look for things we really need, and Grandma will say, Well, I don't know, we'll see. But then Grandpa says he's going to find the restroom and sneaks back to buy just what we wanted. <laughs> Sounds like a Grandpa to me. <sighs> Each year on the seventh night, we light our menorah at our best friends or our best of all friends house they celebrate christmas but they like mom's latkes almost as much as i do so we bring over a giant platter of them after dinner they surprise us with hanukkah presents and we help them trim their tree with cranberries and tinsel and all the ornaments their two cats haven't broken All right, so let's light the seventh candle for the seventh night of Hanukkah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When their tree is finished, the room is lit with only our menorah's flames and the strands of Christmas lights. We tuck the presents we bought them under the tree and eat cookies I've sometimes helped decorate earlier in the day. Did I tell you that our Hanukkah is also about people of different religions living alongside one another? On the last night of Hanukkah, so that would be the eighth night, with all nine candles burning, we open our gifts, one at a time, so everyone can watch and no one gets cheated out of a thank you hug. Our dog gets presents too, even though he isn't Jewish. Half the presents we made ourselves and the rest we bought with saved up allowance. Plus, there are packages from relatives who live too far away to come over. All right, let's light the, light the eighth candle for the eighth night of Hanukkah. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But while we're still sitting on the floor among all the ribbons and boxes, Dad usually says something besides thank you, everybody. He always says something like, aren't we lucky to be able to celebrate our holiday with everyone in our family in this safe place? It's a miracle. Well, now I know he doesn't mean a great miracle, as in the first Hanukkah story, but maybe it's a tiny one. Maybe a lot of tiny miracles add up to a great one if you think about the whole world and all these menorahs glowing in lots and lots of windows and all that light. All right, so I just realized that I messed up and I put the dreidel game away yesterday when I did the forest class circle time. So let me go grab it real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Sometimes it's easy to get confused about what I've done for one class's circle time and what I've done for other the other class. It gets a little mix, mixed up for me. All right, so let me show you that I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to show you the dreidel game first. Okay, so in your packet you have the directions for how to play the dreidel game and you have this kind of thicker paper that has a paper dreidel printed on it. So um, I would recommend that you have your mom or dad cut this out unless you are an excellent scissor cutter. Okay, like lots of practice you can cut just like a grown up because this cutting has to be done pretty perfectly or the, or the dreidel can't be put together properly. All right, so I'm not gonna demonstrate that now because that would take too long. I'm gonna just kind of show you how to play the dreidel game, okay? So I have my own dreidel game set. Inside I have a dreidel. This is a dreidel, it's a spinning top. See, it has, and it has a different character on each side of it. That means something different. And then I have these plastic coins, which are my Hanukkah gelt. Remember they talked about that in the book? Mine are not real, mine are plastic. Mine also aren't chocolate. Chocolate ones are the best, but these are not chocolate. All right, so when you play this game, what you're gonna do, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm playing with one other person. They're sitting here and I'm sitting there. We're gonna spread out the Hanukkah gelt evenly between each of the people playing. And then there's one extra, so I'm gonna put that in the middle. So each person takes a turn and spins the dreidel, whoops. Whatever symbol is on the top, you look on your paper, that's none, so it means do nothing. So I'm not gonna do anything. So this is my other person over here is gonna spin. We're just pretending they are there, right? It's a pretend thing. All right, oh, we got the same one again. This is the symbol none, it means do nothing. So now it's my turn again. I'm gonna try to get something different this time, hopefully. For some reason it likes to land. Ah, yay, I got a different one, so this one, it's called hay, and it means take half the pot. Now, there's only one coin in there. I can't break it in half, so I'm just gonna take the whole thing. All right, so my next person's gonna go. Spin the dreidel, woo, goodness. All right, this time we got the symbol called shin, and it means, says put one in. So I'm gonna take one of my Hanukkah gelt and put it in the middle, all right? So you're gonna keep doing that, keep playing back and forth, taking turns, all right? And when you run out of pieces, you're out of the, the game is over. All right, so I'm gonna put my Hanukkah gelt back in the bag. And you can play this with as many people as you want. And you can use, um, you could use pennies or any other kind of coins, or if you can get the chocolate gelt, it's really fun. A lot of times, um, lots of places have that this time of year. Target probably has it. Um, all right, and let's see here. I have a few things here. So in your packet, you have dreidel color matching. All right, you have a little packet with the, each different color dreidel, and then you have two different papers. One of them has the words in the colors that they mean, and one of them has the colors with the color words without their colors, okay? This one you use if you already know your color words. This one is to learn the color words. So if you don't know what they are, you use this one, all right? So this is a matching game. So let's see here, this is a, what color? Yep, blue. So I'm gonna find the word that says blue and is the color blue also, see? Like that, all right? 
Let's do one more. What color is that? Yes, pink. So that one's going to go where it's pink. All right. Now you can either glue these down or see I'm not gluing them down and I can do it again. So if you don't glue them down, you can do the game many more times. You can practice it and maybe you'll learn your color words, right? Or if you want to, you can just do it once and glue them down. All right. We also have two papers called Spin and Count the Dreidel. One has the numbers to five. So if you know your numbers to five, you can do this one. The other one has the numbers to 10. So if you know your numbers to 10, you can do this one. All right? Or you can do both of them to practice all the numbers. So what you're going to do is um, I'm using my little plastic dreidel here. You can use your dreidel that I sent you that you can make out of the um, paper. Or it's easy to find dreidels this time of year. You can yeah, I'm sure you can just order them online too if you want to use like an actual um, plastic or wooden dreidel. So I'm going to spin my dreidel. Oh, and I just realized, just a second here, let me grab my crayons from over here. So I need those for this. All right, so I'm going to spin my dreidel. And let's see what symbol I got. I got hay, which is this one right here. So I'm going to color in one of the boxes for hay, because I got one of those. This is a kind of a graphing game. We're going to see how many times you get each one. Oops, try again. That's a pretty good spin. Oh, this time I got shin. I'd show them to you, but they're really hard to see on here. So I'm going to color in one shin square. See, let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so you could keep spinning. And each time you get each of the different symbols, you can color in a square. All right. And the last thing I have to show you is this Hanukkah I Spy. So you're going to look down here. This is a picture of a dreidel. You're going to count how many dreidels there are up here and write the number here or have your mom or dad write it. Okay. Same with the Star of David, the blue, the blue balloons, the yellow balloons, the Hanukkah gelt, the menorah, the oil lamp, and the snowflake. Okay, so those are all things in your packet that you can work on this week. I hope you all have a great day. I will see some of you today at 1030 for small group. And we will be back uh, again for um, circle time next week and small group again. All right. Bye, everyone.